Hi, I'm Nicholas from Readings.com. Today we'll be looking at the popular Sony X85K. The TV was originally released in 2022, but is still widely available and going strong. It's an interesting TV for gamers thanks to its HDMI 2.1 bandwidth that allows you to game up to 120Hz in 4K. We bought and tested the 65-inch model, and although the stand is a bit different on the smaller sizes, our results are valid for all variants. Is the TV worth the price it sells for, or is there a better way to spend your money? We'll answer that at the end of the video, but first, let's take a look at the design and performance of the TV. The Sony X85K has a simplistic design that isn't premium, but isn't cheap either. The bezels are textured plastic and kind of shiny, but they're mostly thin with a typical thicker one at the bottom. The TV is supported by two wide set plastic feet that raise the screen about 3.3 inches, so most soundbars will fit underneath without blocking the screen. The back of the TV is plastic and has a matte finish with Sony's common checkerboard pattern. All the inputs face the side, but they're set into the TV, so they are hard to access if you have it wall mounted. The TV has four HDMI inputs, two of which have HDMI 2.1 bandwidth. It's a good thing as you can take full advantage of modern gaming consoles and PCs, but one of those inputs also serves as the eARC port. This means if you're going to plug in your soundbar or receiver, you only have one HDMI 2.1 port left to use, which is limiting. Besides its two USB ports, optical audio out port, and one Ethernet port, it also has an ATSC 3.0 tuner, so you can watch over the air channels in 4K. It also has a composite input for older devices, but it requires an adapter that isn't included in the box. Moving on to the picture quality now, and we'll start with the contrast. It has an all right contrast ratio, but doesn't have a local dimming feature to make it better. Blacks are deep in dark scenes, but bright objects and highlights make blacks look gray. The TV has good reflection handling and great SDR brightness. It gets bright enough to overcome glare in a well-lit room, and small light sources aren't much of a problem. With that said, more direct reflections from strong light sources are still an issue, so you won't want to point a lamp directly at the screen or place it opposite a bright window. Unfortunately, the TV doesn't perform quite as well regarding HDR brightness. It gets bright enough for some highlights to pop, but bright specular highlights don't pop the way they should, so HDR content lacks the impact it should have. Combine that with the lack of local dimming, and you're not getting the full HDR experience. One positive in terms of its HDR performance is that it has excellent PQ EOTF tracking for an accurate image. Of all brands, Sony seems to be the best in terms of accuracy, which is the case here. Dark shadow details and HDR content are a bit raised and midtones are slightly too bright, but it's not very noticeable. There is a smooth roll off near the TV's peak brightness, so some fine details and bright scenes are preserved. Sony's focus on accuracy also carries over when it comes to color. The TV has fantastic SCR accuracy after changing just a few basic settings out of the box. Some brighter scenes are too dark, but other inaccuracies are barely noticeable. Calibrating the TV adds very little, so this TV doesn't require it if you care about accuracy. Keeping with colors, the TV has fantastic coverage of the DCI P3 color space, which is used in most HDR content. But it's much more limited in its coverage of the Rec 2020 color space that is slowly increasing in popularity with HDR content. Colors in both spaces are off the mark, but it's not too bad and will be noticeable to most people. Moving on, the TV has a narrow viewing angle, so it's not a good choice if you watch TV with friends or family. This is because anyone sitting at the sides will see a washed out image on the screen. Also, if you use the TV as a PC monitor and like to sit close, the sides of the screen aren't uniform either. Now, let's quickly talk about its gaming performance. It has a great response time, so there's little blur behind quick movements while gaming or watching faster sports. Unfortunately, there is some overshoot with dark transitions, which causes ghosting. If you're a gamer and are picky with motion handling, this might cause you some pain, especially if you're playing darker games, like something from the horror genre. Gaming also feels responsive as it has low input lag that is good enough for most people. However, it's a bit higher than other TVs, so you might want to look elsewhere if you're a competitive gamer and play reaction-based games. If you're sensitive to flicker while gaming or watching movies, you'll be happy to hear that this TV doesn't have any. The backlight is completely flicker-free across all brightness levels and picture modes, which is handy because you won't have to change any picture settings to avoid feeling nauseous. The last thing about gaming is that the TV works well with the PS5 and Xbox Series X and S. It supports 4K gaming up to 120Hz with HDR and VRR, so you get a great looking image with no screen tearing. Unfortunately, it can't do 120Hz with Dolby Vision enabled, 
So if you want to use that on your Xbox, you're limited to 60 Hertz. Since Dolby Vision Gaming is still in its infancy, this isn't a deal breaker anyway. If you aren't gaming and watching movies instead, you'll be happy to know that the TV can remove 24p judder from any source. So whether you're using the TV's built-in apps or connecting your 4K Blu-ray player to watch movies, you won't have to worry about juddery motion. Moving away from the picture quality, this TV has decent built-in speakers. However, like almost all TVs on the market, you won't get much bass out of it. The frequency response is decent, with a well-balanced sound profile and moderate listening levels. Unfortunately, as you raise the volume, there's more compression artifacts and distortion, so it's not good for a bigger room that needs more volume. If you want good sound quality, you'll want to pair it with a soundbar or a proper sound system. Lastly, it comes with a popular Google TV operating system. It's user-friendly and loaded with a big selection of apps, so you can easily find your favorite shows. Like most TVs, there are ads throughout the interface. You can opt out of personalized ads, but this won't completely get rid of them. Instead, you will get non-targeted ads, which might be even more irritating since they're even less relevant to you. It comes with Sony's standard remote, which they've been including with their TVs for the past couple of years. It doesn't have a physical number pad and instead uses a virtual numpad that appears on the screen when you hit the one, two, three button. This won't bother most people, but it can be annoying if you use cable and like to switch between channels manually. The remote has a built-in microphone that gives you access to Google Assistant, and you can use it to change inputs, open apps, and search for content. You just need to ensure that Bluetooth is enabled on the TV for the voice controls to work. So now comes the big question. Should you buy this TV? The answer for most people is probably not. If you care about image accuracy and don't want to pay to calibrate your TV, this is a good choice. While it's also a good option for gamers and people looking for modern features, you can get that and more with a cheaper TV like the Hisense U7K. The Hisense comes in the same range of sizes and performs better in almost every way. The biggest difference is that the Hisense has a local dimming feature, so blacks are much deeper across the board. The U7K also has a faster response time, less input lag, and better HDR peak brightness. You can get all of this for a lot less than the cost of the X85K, so it's the better option for most people. That's all for the Sony X85K. If you want more details on the TV, check out our written review. The link is in the description below. Until next time, I'm Nicholas from Ratings.com, where we help you find the best product for your needs. Ciao. Just a little bit, I think you scratched your head. <laughs> there you go. And there's like red on your... Oh, th there you go. Is it is it like lines? Yes. There you go. It just takes time to just go. Yeah. Away. Well, how 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 have you been? <laughs> it's good. You? Good. Okay, I see it. Yeah. It's like it's like a a, a war mark or something. <laughs>